Hey guys, thank you for joining us this week. I hope you're ready to hop into this week's message.
takes away our sin, who takes away our sin. Hey, welcome uh, to the BCM Worship Time, and so thankful that you took time out of your day uh, to spend time with us in worship. So thankful for our BCM Worship Team of Natasha, JT, and Derek who, who led us in worship. Uh, so thankful for their gifts and talents, and I want to encourage you through the word we're going to look at today. For the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God. This week is going to be on video. Uh, next week, it will be in person. And so what does the kingdom of God, or a, a term Jesus used a lot was the kingdom of heaven. And so what does the kingdom of heaven, what is the kingdom of God, what does that mean? And when Jesus said it, what did he mean? And so we're going to look at that today. So if you have a Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 13. Throughout the Old and the New Testament, this thread of a kingdom or a king coming runs all the way through it. Moses talked about a coming king who would be a savior. David prophesied and looked for the king of kings, the one who uh, would rule over all. Isaiah prophesied about uh, the king's birth and the king's suffering. The last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, he prophesied, he talked about, and was a foreshadow of a messenger who would come and prepare the way for the king to come. And that messenger was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist went around preaching. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And really, the first words out of Jesus, one of the first times he preaches in Matthew 4, 17, he says that exact same thing. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so we look at that phrase, and let's look at the word kingdom. For there to be a kingdom, there must be a king. And so Jesus comes and says, I am the king. I am the Messiah. I am the promised one, and my kingdom is here. And he also says the word repent. And repent is to turn away from it. You're walking in one direction, and to repent is to turn and go the opposite direction. And so for a lot of our lives, I don't know where you are in your spiritual life, whenever we walk in our, under our own will and under our own authority, and we're walking away from the Lord, and Jesus says, repent, turn and come to me and enter the kingdom. And so his first words were, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so to understand the kingdom, Jesus talked a lot about it, especially in the book of Matthew. And in that chapter 13 of Matthew, he goes, Jesus teaches a lot of parables. A parable is a story that has eternal truth. And so some of them are just examples of ordinary objects that are used to, to explain what the kingdom of it is and what God is like and who Jesus is. In Matthew 
13, like 10 through 17, Jesus talks about the parable of the soils. And I'm not going to read that section, but let me just kind of summarize it for you. Really, that parable is about every person who's ever taken a breath and who's alive right now, their soul has a spiritual condition, a spiritual temperature. And the parable of soils explains that there are barriers that can keep you from hearing and responding to the king and entering the kingdom. But if your soul is sensitive to the Lord, it will be ready to receive the gospel, hear the gospel, and respond to the gospel. And so the warning of Jesus in, in those verses is, He who has an ear... Let him hear. And so the question that I, I have to ask myself you know, sometimes daily is, is my heart sensitive to the Lord? Do I have ears to hear from God? And am I willing to respond obediently to the call of Jesus for that day? And so my prayer for you is that you will have uh, a spiritual heart that is sensitive to the calling and the working of Jesus in your life. He also goes on to explain uh, what the kingdom is like. And so uh, with your Bible, turn to uh, Matthew 13. And we're going to start in verse 31. Matthew 13, 31. And here's what Jesus said. He put another parable before them, saying... The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make their nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. And so that's kind of an interesting parable, two parables actually. One talks about a seed, another one talks about leaven or yeast that makes bread rise. Two really small things that make really huge impacts. So he says the kingdom of heaven is like a seed that it seems small and insignificant, but as it grows, it becomes huge and welcomes other birds into its nest, to make their nest there. Then you have the leaven, the yeast. It works its way through the flour and rises in the bread. So what is he saying the kingdom of God is in these parables? I think it's this, that the kingdom of heaven may seem very small and not very powerful, but as it grows, it's a transforming work in a person's life. I don't know if you've experienced this or not, that you've uh, entered into the kingdom, you're, you're a follower of Jesus, and it may not seem like you're growing very much spiritually. But if you take time to look back on where you've come from spiritually, you can see how God has been working in your life. Even though it may seem small, the work of God is happening. And the kingdom, it may not, you may not see how the kingdom is expanding, but it is. And the second part of that is the kingdom work may go unseen, but it is unstoppable. All around the globe, all around the world, on every continent where there is a follower of Jesus, there is a person telling other people about Jesus, and the kingdom is expanding through the proclamation of the gospel. We can't see it, but it's happening. The kingdom is unstoppable. And that's really encouraging because sometimes we don't think God is working. We don't see him working in our lives. But this truth that Jesus is saying is the kingdom is working. The kingdom is growing and the kingdom is unstoppable. 
And so I hope in your life that you are experiencing that. You're experiencing kingdom work in your heart and that the kingdom is growing in you and, the, and spiritual growth is happening in you. It happens when you have ears to hear and eyes to see spiritual truth. Ears to hear the word of God and eyes to see spiritual truth in a heart that is open to responding to Jesus every day. The kingdom is unstoppable in your life. It's an unstoppable in the classroom. It's unstoppable on a campus. It's unstoppable in a state. Everywhere the kingdom is, it's unstoppable. And it's a growing, growing force. Well, he goes on in verse 44. And this is, this is really good. I hope you like this one. Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and saw, sold all he had and bought it. I like the first one. It's like a man walking through a field and he's kicking the dirt and he sees something in that field. I don't know if it's gold or diamonds or what it is. He sees a treasure there. And he looks around and he covers it with dirt. He doesn't want anyone else to find it. And he goes and, did you catch that phrase? Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys the field. When he saw the treasure, he knew how valuable it was. The value of that treasure has more value than every possession he has. And in his joy, he sells it all to have this one treasure. Do you view Jesus that way? That he is the greatest treasure of all. And anything I have, whether it be tangible or intangible in my life, all my dreams, all my aspirations, all my possessions, all my social media, everything in my life is worth giving up so I can follow Jesus the King. Do you view Jesus that way? Is he the greatest treasure in your life? That's what he says the kingdom is like. Following him, having the kingdom, is of greater value than anything you can possess or have or be. In his joy, he sold everything. Have you gotten to that place in your life where following Jesus is everything to you and everything else is second? Have you gotten there? That's what Jesus says the kingdom is like. He is a treasure that is worth everything. The last one. Look at verse 47. He says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate e the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace in the place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now he goes from being a great treasure to this is really a dark and sad and hard thing. And so 
he says the kingdom is kind of exclusive. What does that mean? Well, it's exclusive to those who have accepted the invitation to enter it. The invitation goes to all, but not all accept the invitation. And he says, at the end of the age, when the king comes back, there's going to be a sifting, a separating. Those who have accepted the call of Jesus to come into the kingdom will enter into that kingdom. And those who have not will be separated from him forever. And as hard as that sounds, it's what Jesus says the kingdom is like. It's exclusive, but it's open to all. So that's why it's so important for you to have ears to hear and eyes to see the beauty of the gospel. Ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart that's open to see the value and the treasure that is Jesus. And so my encouragement for you is, is what's your spiritual heart condition? Let me hit a couple more things as we wrap it up. What does it mean to be great in the kingdom? Jesus talked about, you want to be great in the kingdom? Here's how you become great in the kingdom. In, in Matthew 18, 3 and 4, he says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom. Whoever humbles himself like this child will be great in the kingdom. So how do you get into the kingdom? You humble yourself like a child. And how does a child humble themselves? Because I've known some kids that weren't very humble. But what humbles them, how they express humility, is when they get into a spot where there is no choice but to cry out to their parents, Mommy, Daddy, I need you. And so Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, humble yourself before the Lord like that. That you say, Father, I need you. Jesus called God the Father his Abba. It's an affectionate term. It says, Daddy, I need you. And so if you want to be great in the kingdom, humble yourself. He says, that's how you enter in. The call of Jesus is simple. It is come. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. He says, come. And those who are humble in heart that says, I have made a mess of my life, and I can't do life on my own. I need Jesus. Those are the ones who enter in. And there are about three, there's more, but, but three simple commands that Jesus gives us about the kingdom. The first one is this in Matthew 6, 33. It says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given unto you. So if you want to be in the kingdom, you've got to seek the kingdom. And while you're in the kingdom, you continue to seek him, and he will provide for you. The second call or command is to pray for the kingdom to come. You find that in the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so how is the kingdom run in heaven? The word of Jesus settles everything. He has power and he has authority and he rules over heaven. And this prayer is, Lord, let your reign in heaven come to earth. And that happens when a person 
humbly and submits their lives to Jesus. Let your reign in heaven come to earth. And the lastly, he says, proclaim the kingdom. You find that in Matthew 28. Go make disciples unto all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them all the things that I have commanded you. In John 20, he says, Peace be with you, and as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So if you're going to be in the kingdom, you're going to seed the kingdom, you're going to pray for the kingdom to come, and you're going to proclaim the kingdom with a humble heart. So my prayer for us is that we will have those attitudes. We will have humility as a child of the king. That we will humbly seek the king. We will humbly pray for the kingdom to come. And that means in my life, in my family, in my circle of friends, in my classroom, in my school, in this state, in this nation, around the world. God, may your kingdom come. And it's going to come as we proclaim it. So my prayer for you is that this word encourages you, that you see the beauty of Jesus, you see the value of Jesus, that you see that he is welcoming you and calling you to come into his kingdom, to be a child of the king. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you as you seek the kingdom. God bless you. Hope you guys enjoyed our video. We'll see you guys on Monday at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. for our in-person discussions.